Let's create your first lighting setup with Set a Light 3D. Once you've watched this video, you'll be able to hit the ground running, so stay tuned. When opening a Set a Light 3D, the start screen appears. Here you can access recently used files or start fresh with one of three rooms. Studio templates are available as well as which we're going to show you in yet another video. As you can see, a starting scene awaits us here. Here's a quick recap for your orientation. You see the studio in which you're creating your setup. Very important, there's no lighting calculation happening in the studio. The shadows are rudimentary and meant for rough orientation purposes only. Over there, you can get into a camera view mode, which can be adjusted right up here and here. The complete lighting calculation takes place within the camera. Here, you can see the top view, meaning the studio from above. Here, you can switch to the set list which contains all placed objects. Later on, the pictures that you're taking will show here in this timeline. Here, you're finding the models. Here, the flashes. Here, the speed lights. Here, the continuous light, helpers, and props. Over here, you can adjust detailed settings on your currently selected object, meaning on the model, for example. By holding down the right mouse button, you can rotate the room or use the mouse wheel to zoom in and out. Of course, all this is possible here via the navigation. I am deleting the studio content so that we can start from scratch together. Let's get started. Our first step is to put a model into the studio, and maybe a light so it won't be too dark. The overall operation of the model is very extensive, therefore we're only showing you a few select details. Next, you're choosing a suitable styling. There's a huge selection of styles which can be additionally adjusted. I'm just getting a box from the props section now, so I can place the model's foot on it later. Backdrops you'll find here. As you can see, objects can directly be clicked on and moved around in the studio. Here, you can rotate it, and here, raise it. And now, we're already moving on to the pose. Choose something suitable from the templates. Presets can be found here. On to the posing mode we go. I'm activating it either here, or here. In posing mode, you can arrange the pose according to your needs and, of course, also save the pose later on. There are two modes, the simple and the advanced mode. Let's start with the simple mode. In simple mode, there are three ways to move a limb. You can, for example, move the hip in the room or rotate it by holding down the shift key. Tilting the hip is possible by holding down the control key. This function depends on the viewing angle. If you're looking at the model from a side angle, you can tilt the model back and forth by means of the control key. Let's switch to the advanced mode. In advanced mode, you select an area and can then control everything via the rotation handles in a very detailed manner. So while you can work very intuitively in simple mode, it is not very precise, whereas advanced mode provides you with complete control of all details. While positioning the model, it is very important that you spin around a lot. Doing so signifies the work process for you. I recommend using a photo as a template, which makes things even easier. In this tab, you can move the fingers. Up here, you can adjust them all at once, or here, one by one as well. By the way, you'll find help at all times. I recommend you take this opportunity right away and watch a video specifically about posing as well. Moving on to lighting. When you pull lighting into the studio, it is always pointing directly at the model. By means of the rotation handles, you can position it to your liking. If you're changing the direction up here, the light then stays fixed to the point the laser pointer was aimed at. By clicking on this icon, the light direction reverts back to the model. Here, you can swap the light former in order to compare the lighting effects. Here, you can adjust the variant and select a honeycomb. 
Here, you can even exchange the flash head itself. Needless to say that color filters can be used as well. Over there, you can even adjust the cold temperature of the lights. Let's maybe even tint the background. And of course, let's not forget about a small effect light as part of our creation. The light's intensity can be regulated here in the set list. Here you can also see the amount of watt seconds each flash puts out. Remember to switch into solo mode as well so you can see the full effect of this light. All other lights are deactivated during this process. You can also block out a light here if you like. Also, keep in mind, as long as you're only working with flashlight, changes in the shutter speed hardly have an effect on the picture. This is due to the extremely short flash duration. Shutter speed only takes full effect with continuous lighting. Now, it's about time for the first picture. Here and here, you can snap one and the settings will be saved together with the picture in the timeline. We can also render right away, but it takes longer and the view changes to the view module in the meantime. Now you can also create a few different versions of your settings and save a few more snapshots. Once you're satisfied with the outcome, switch to the view module. Here you can now take yet another look at your results and render the pictures accordingly. Once a picture has been rendered, you can use this button down here to switch directly into the rendering directory. It makes sense to save your project prior to switching because it will then lead you straight into the correct directory instead of your operating system's temp folder. You will then always find the folder with your renderings inside the directory that you use to save your project. Now we're switching to the export module. Here, you'll select whether you want to export a PDF or JPG and decide upon a suitable template. Now you can adjust the top down view here by moving the area while holding down the right mouse button and use the magnifying glass to adjust the image section. Now place the setting fields. Holding down the left mouse button allows you to draw dimension lines. If you hold down the ALT key before letting go of the mouse button, you can dimension any point as you see fit. Now adjust the studio view accordingly. The navigation is the same as in studio. If you like, you can also add a header and embed your logo. Now it's all done and you can export your first setup. This was, of course, just the tip of the iceberg. Setalite 3D can do so much more. In our additional videos, we will show you how. Now, it's your turn. Get started and create your very own first lighting setup. With a little practice, you'll turn into a lighting pro in no time at all.